President Trump made a promise, and, and certainly his admin, him, himself and the administration have dug into this issue uh, quite well. They understand it quite thoroughly and are on the verge of really, I'll use the football analogy you were talking about before, but getting it across the goal line. So we do expect something to be done, and we certainly appreciate their efforts. Uh, Congresswoman, we've heard from other steel manufacturers that they welcome this. It could create jobs if there's more demand for their product. You fear that there'd be a loss of jobs in your district. Why? Absolutely. And for while you were congratulating uh, Barry on his employees receiving this bonus because of the tariffs that are coming, my district is in danger right now of losing bonuses from tax reform that they were given because the economy is booming. We all know we're on this track that's very positive. Regulation reform, tax reform, companies expanding. But in my district, just the thought of tariffs and when the president started talking 25 percent here and 10 percent there in the RV industry, the recreational vehicle, boating, trailer manufacturing. We have one of the largest manufacturing districts. Employees right now aren't looking at bonuses. They're looking at jobs uh, hung up, jobs potentially leaving, orders in the queue, uh, expansion plans, downsized. Mm -hmm. well, so there's a, there, con con there is a I, cost to this. And, I, and I, I, all I'm saying is let's be balanced. I, I, absolutely right. be I absolutely beg to differ. We supply those RV manufacturers and actually their business is booming. Uh, right now, and it when is you talk, now, uh, but it there's is, a well, no, no, hold on. It, let's talk about the actual okay. cost of this product. Let's put this All into right. perspective. You talked about Caterpillar, an American icon, a great company, makes the best equipment in the world. A D9 bulldozer, fabulous piece of equipment, weighs 71,000 pounds. About 40,000 pounds of that is actual steel, not cast iron or parts. That bulldozer cost $950,000. The increase in the price of that steel going into that bulldozer would be about $300 a ton or roughly $7,000. If you're telling me that Caterpillar doesn't have pricing power of less than 1% and that's going to affect their sales, you're crazy. Oh, if you look at uh, no, hold on. If you look at this, if you look well, well, at the steel, let, let, you let look her at the steel. That. Let her answer that. Look at the steel I'm in a mobile I'm interested to hear home. the answer to that. Congressman, yeah, go ahead. What do you say? Yeah, with all due respect, right? Uh, $350 here, $7,000 there is real money to Hoosiers in the Indiana 2nd District. Let me tell you, when they look at tax reform and they're looking at continuing job expansion and a lot of momentum, and I know you service them now, but they're also getting, I ran into a CEO at the airport this morning who's already getting a 20% increase in the material from these domestic companies here because they know tariffs are coming and, and, and what there's is, no and, choice. And what is that as a, as a total component cost of, of that good. It is it's relatively real small. It's real money well, It is real money, and I'm dealing with it too. I have 2,000 employees in the U.S. who make real money, and I would have 3,000 employees in the U.S. making great money if I didn't have dumped illegal imports coming in at subsidized prices that are subsidized by foreign governments. The consumer All right, but the is difference the consumer, I hear here... The, the, the difference the I hear here, Barry, is you're the producer and the congresswoman's uh, district, uh, I, they're I, the consumers. The I, hate, I hate to tell you. Their I'm costs an, are going to go do, up because you're going to charge no, more. Absolutely not. I don't they're produce, charging more I, now. I do, not, I do not produce steel. I'm a consumer of steel. I use that steel to make my products. So I am well aware. I've fought this fight and been in this fight for 32 years. I know exactly what's going on. You know the, exactly because you own a company here. You own a company in Canada. There's very, I, hard, I, very little I'm harm sorry? done here to China, which is the should be focusing on China and not trying to hurt each other. Hold, hold All on I'm a minute. asking for I is own, balance I own, and I own, exemption. I own one plant in Canada with 300 employees. I own 15 plants in the U.S. with 2,000 employees. We're the largest private steel consumer. But Mr. Zickelman, her consumer point US. is, her point is that when you talk about the illegal dumping that makes you so angry, it yeah. is China that's it doing is China. it, right? We so shouldn't China, be fighting hold on. each other. And, and so, and aren't you concerned, Mr. Zickelman, that these? are such unilateral on every single country well, well, instead here, of just focusing on China. So so here, here's the issue. There are no question there are what we refer to as the dirty dozen uh, of, of countries that are the primary problem. The issue with that is China takes that product and moves it all over the world to then move it into substantial transformation to move it into our country. So there's no question that there are worse offenders and we quite frankly would like to see the duties on those dirty dozen much higher than the 25 percent that that are, are being uh, proposed today 
There are countries that are good trading partners with us. There's no question. Canada is one of them. We're hoping that something can be worked out. But in the absence of that, this is a net net overall good for, for the USA. And in the end, Canada will take measures as well to, to block illegally dumped steel into that country, which have cost us hundreds and thousands of jobs. You know, and that's your world, Barry, and that's your view. My reality is when we're an end user and we manufacture at the, way, at the rate that we're manufacturing, this is a pure jobs issue. All I'm asking the president, all I asked him two weeks ago, was let's have a balanced a fair and balanced look at this. We don't have to annihilate one industry for everybody else to survive. Let's oh. make a way for them to actually have good customer service. Go to a domestically produced product, and if they can't get it, let's let's give I, them a way uh, well, to be well, able to well, still survive and save jobs. No one's saying that. No one's saying there won't be exemptions if they can't get it here domestically. I haven't heard an exemption yet, Absol so I'm pleading uh, no, with the president for an right exemption. Now, yeah. No, absolutely not. There is an exemption inclusion in this. If you can't get the product here, there will be an exemption and there will be a waiver and you will be able to bring that product in. Now, remember something. No, the, 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 steel, the steel industry used to make 100 million tons here a year. You know, 120 today are 2.3 million tons a week. It now makes 1.7 million tons. I'd shudder to think how you're going to build those RVs with tubing, by the way, that I supply just in time to, to Elkhart, Indiana, when you're going to bring that product in from China for those RVs because there's no steel industry here, I'd like to well, see what the costs this. are then. I've got CEOs calling me when I talked to the president a couple of weeks ago. He gave a shout out to the RV industry. I've got them calling me. I'm running across them everywhere I go. And I'm not going to dispute what they're saying about their job force. I understand. Their labor costs. The increase. And, and when you're talking little tiny increases and you're kind of blowing them off, this is real money. It's real jobs. This entity, this industry is on an incline of momentous growth. Well, Tax reform and the rolling backs of regs have done that. You're talking, I represent you're, you're, them. You're, you're, I don't you're want talking to stop about, that growth. You're, you're it talking needs to be about, balanced. Okay, hey there. Thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.